Alright guys, how's it going? My name is Nykser and welcome back to another episode of The Good, The Bad, and The Teemo, where today I'll be covering Bruiser Fizz. Here's the reference guide for today's video. I only tried this specific build out in the top lane, as I feel that mid lane Fizz should pretty much always go for a standard AP build, because it is better in every regard there. So keep that in mind if you do want to try this build out for yourself. For anyone interested, an Imgur link for this reference guide can be found down in the description below. Starting off with the very first good thing about Bruiser Fizz is that he maintains the ability to single out and execute the enemy carries. Even though you won't be building as much damage as you typically would on Fizz, you'll still have the ability to kill the enemy AD carry or mid laner with your ultimate and a rotation of your abilities. This becomes incredibly valuable once you reach the late game, as removing that much damage output from the enemy team will be crucial for your team to win late game team fights. Helping with this late game damage is the versatility that Bruiser Fizz has in terms of item selection. For the most part, I stuck with Iceborne Gauntlet and Blade of the Ruin King as core items while testing this build, but even those can be swapped out for items like Dead Man's Plate and Ginsu's Rage Blade. You're also capable of starting off with a Rod of Ages if you want to build which scales even better in the late game, but ultimately the build you'll want to go with will vary wildly depending on the matchup. Bruiser Fizz is capable of filling any gap that the rest of your team composition may have created. Fizz is already a very slippery champion to try and catch, so when building plenty of tank stats, it only enhances this effect even further. In most cases, you should be 100% safe from any enemy ganks, provided that you aren't hit with any long duration crowd controls, such as Morgana's Binding. Playful Trickster makes it very easy to avoid enemy skill shots, and your Urchin Strike can be used both offensively and defensively. Defensively by dashing back through the minion wave to distance yourself from the enemy, or offensively to close the distance if your lane opponent tried to burn flash to get away. Bruiser Fizz is also great against tanks, despite not building full damage, this comes from the percent health damage on his W, which doesn't require a ton of AP to become incredibly potent. In the current patch, this is very useful, with top laners like Maokai and Dr. Mundo being very powerful. And lastly, another great thing about Bruiser Fizz is the extra bit of crowd control provided from some of the available build paths. Iceborne Gauntlet in particular is very useful, as you should be able to get the item to proc two or three times with a single rotation of your abilities. The active effect from Blade of the Ruin King can also help you close the gap to any escaping enemies, and you even have the option of building Rylai's if you want just a bit more extra crowd control. Let's move on to the bad things about Bruiser Fizz. One of the first things that comes with playing Fizz is the ability to try and continuously dive your lane opponent. This can either go very well or very bad depending on how successful the dives are. And as Bruiser Fizz, you may sometimes feel the need to try and dive the enemy laner to achieve lane dominance. I've decided to put this under the bad section rather than the Teemo, simply because it is something which can be completely avoided, and players who choose to play a bit more passive shouldn't really come across this problem as often. However, if the dive does go bad, you'll be in for a rough time as Bruiser Fizz does very poorly when behind. This is partly because you won't have quite as much damage as you normally would, which requires you to play extraordinarily well in certain cases to make up for any advantage you may have lost. One final bad thing about Bruiser Fizz is something which is usually a problem with Fizz in general, and that is the weak early game he has prior to reaching level 6. Once you have your ultimate available, there is room for outplay potential and the ability to turn a teamfight around in your favor, but without it you're relatively weak as all of your abilities will put you directly in harm's way if you are using them for maximum damage output. And finally we've made it to the Teemo. This is a section which covers the biggest issues of Bruiser Fizz, and will likely be the primary reason why you would prefer a different build instead. The first of which is that he is very weak against poke heavy matchups. Champions like Lulu or Nar can easily auto you whenever you go for some CS. In matchups like these, you'll either need to play very safe or get assistance from your jungler to pick up an easy early kill. Coupled with this is the ability for several champions to completely counter any all-ins you may attempt. Abilities like Lulu's Polymorph and Kill's Ultimate make your all-in completely useless and will likely result in your death more than anything. This can become even more harmful if done in a teamfight, as you won't be able to do anything if they can single you out and kill you. Luckily, you will have extra survivability, so you may be able to get out of these situations by only burning a flash. But that's all I have regarding Bruiser Fizz. Fizz isn't really a champion that I play all that often, so this video is a bit different for me. I'd still recommend the more typical AP build over this one simply because of the late game damage, but I don't think this is a bad build by any means simply because of the 1v1 dueling potential. I'll likely revisit Fizz in the future when I make a video for Jungle Fizz, and I'll likely prefer a more AP heavy build than the one I tried for the sake of this video. Feel free to leave a like if you did enjoy the video, and subscribe if you are new around here and would like to see more. If you didn't like the video, feel free to leave a dislike. All I ask is that you leave a comment with what you believe I could have done better so that my future content can continue to improve. But anyways, that's all I have for you guys in this video. I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one.